Okay, trig graphs. Um, the trig graphs, the topic of trig graphs. Let's see, we've got y equals a sine bx and y equals a cosine bx. And the pattern that I, that I had for this, remember, um, was zero, max, zero, min, zero. All right, so you start at zero, you go up to a max, back to zero, under the min, and then back to zero. Right? And that's going to be uh, y equals a sine bx. Now, the amplitude of a sine or a cosine curve is like how high up does it go, right? And uh, the amplitude is always, if you're using the equation that's the absolute value of a, if you're using this, if you're using the graph here, you take the um, max minus the min, and then you divide it by 2 like that. And that's absolute value of that, by the way. Okay. All right, frequency, that's how many times this cycle repeats in two pi units, and that's going to be B. And the period is the, the length that for one full cycle, remember, it's two pi over B. So like this would be like two pi over B, right? All right, there we go. And then cosine, y equals a cosine x is going to be similar, but that one has the pattern max, zero, min, zero, max. A little bit longer there. All right, max, zero, min, zero, max. And that is going to be the standard cosine curve right there. I'm going to do this kind of quick, but the amplitude is the same exact thing. Frequency is the same thing, and the period is 2 pi over b. Now remember, the period is the length of one full cycle. So it's 2 pi over b units there. All right? So here we go, let's try an example. Sketch one cycle of y equals negative 3 sine half x. So um, what I have to pay attention to, attention to here is that I have that negative a. All right, so it's going to flip the pattern. It's a sine, so instead of being 0 max 0 min 0, it's going to be 0 min 0 max 0. Okay, because when I negate the negative, when I have the negative 3 there, that re reflects it across the x-axis, okay? All right, um, other than that, I sketch it exactly the same way. It said sketch one cycle, so now I want to know my amplitude. My amplitude is three, my frequency is a half, and my period is two pi over a half, which comes out to be like four pi, okay? So then I'll label this after the fact, that's four pi, Half of that is 2 pi, half of that is pi. So in between here, what's, that, what's between 2 pi and 4 pi? 3 pi, right? And how high does this go? Well, it goes up to 3 and down to negative 3, and that comes from the amplitude, okay? The second example has horizontal and vertical shifts to it, all right? Um, see this? It's got minus 1 fourth inside the parentheses here, right in here, okay? Uh, that's going to shift it to the right one-fourth. Remember, inside, it's opposite of the sign, right? So if it's minus one-fourth, you move it to the right one-fourth. And outside, plus one, that's going to move it up one. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with a standard sine curve, okay? A standard sine curve, zero, max, zero, min, zero, all right? That's called the parent function, okay? And the parent function for this, by the way, is y equals 2 sine pi x, okay? With an amplitude of 2, a frequency of pi, and a period of uh, a period of 2 pi over pi, which is going to be 2, okay? So this is 2, that's negative 2, right? This came out to be 2. Then half of that is one, and half of that again is a half. All right. So now I have to move it um, to the right one fourth and up one unit. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to put in uh, quarter units here. Right. This is the half. There we go. All right. Just like that. Okay. So I know I have to take each point and move it to the right one fourth and to the right one fourth and up one. So that's that first point right there. I take this one, right one, up one, right? And this one, right one, up one, right? And then this one goes, uh, this point here goes right one, up one, and then this one goes right one, up one, 
okay? There it is, okay? The problem with that is I need to go all the way out to three. So if there's one, two, say there's three, right? And this is going to be um, halfway between two and three. So um, I'm gonna go up another. This will be the max, and it'll be back down here to the, to the zero, okay? There we go. And then this one and quarter comes down to here. And you just finish in the pattern from there, and then you label this. Uh, I can see with an arrow, so I don't have a lot of room. Okay, there we go. There we go. I sketched it from zero to three and labeled it. So there it is. Y equals tan dx. All right, tan dx. Um, it, it's like zero asymptote zero. Right. So I started at zero. I have an asymptote, and then I have a zero, and that is the way it goes, just like that, right? And then this continues like this, and I have another asymptote out here, right? All right, the frequency, notice I don't have the amplitude for a tangent. It goes up to infinity and down to negative infinity, so it doesn't really have an amplitude. The frequency is going to be b, and the period is pi over b, not 2 pi over b. All right, when you have y equals cotangent dx, now the cotangent is, is the reciprocal of the tangent. So if I have zero at, at zero, I'm gonna actually have like one over zero. So it's the asymptote, comma zero, comma asymptote. Okay? And everything's kind of like reversed. So my asymptote is there at the zero, and then just like that. And that is cotangent, right? And cotangent is decreasing like, it's always decreasing. Okay? So I go down like that. Another asymptote there. Okay? Now our frequency is the same, B, and it's pi over B, right? And this continues infinitely in either direction, depending on what window you're given. It just says sketch y equals tan x. Um, well, y equals tan x looks like this, right? It has an asymptote, and it comes back up to the zero. That's one cycle of the tangent, all right? A lot of kids don't see that as a cycle, but it is. It's, it's the whole thing. A lot of kids think like to think of it more of like, that part I just drew in there between the asymptotes is being a cycle. It didn't give me any kind of window or anything like that, so that's quite sufficient. Okay. Y equals cosecant of x. Now the key to this, cosecant is equal to um, 1 over the sine of x. So I'm going to start the pattern the same way, but I'm not going to graph the sine. I'm just going to do the sine pattern, 0 max, 0 and 0. And, and when the sine is 0, 1 over 0, it's going to be undefined. And that's going to be the asymptotes. Right? And then remember, the cosecant and the secant, I say they're like allergic to the x-axis. They kind of go away from it. Okay, just like that. So there, that's y equals cosecant x. Secant is 1 over cosine. So I start with the same. I start with the cosine pattern. Right? I do those dots there. Wherever the cosine is 0, the secant is undefined because that's 1 over 0. And then you just take these points and you approach the uh, infinity or negative infinity on the asymptotes kind of away from the x-axis. And that's secant, like that. Okay? So if I have 2 cosecant 2x, all right, then that means I'm going to have this like the reciprocal of sine. So I'll start with a sine pattern, right? And this is negative 2 and this is 2, right? And the period is... Uh, period is 2 pi or 2 or pi, so this is pi units right here, okay? And uh, that makes this one pi over 2, and this one pi over 4, and this is uh, 3 pi over 4. Kind of got that off a little bit. Sorry about that. Might be a little more precise. There we go. All right, and remember, you got the asymptotes where the sine is 0, and it just curves, kind of approaches negative infinity or positive infinity, moving away from the axis, just like that. Okay, there we go. That's two close. You can't do that. All right, next. Inverse straight functions. All right, and basically an inverse is not a reciprocal. You're not going to do one over. You're going to switch x and y. So like with the sign, you do zero, max, zero, min, zero, just like that. And by the way, this continues, right? 
infinitely in both directions, depending on what kind of interval you're given. All right. But instead, I'm going to switch the x and y. I can follow the pattern up the y-axis. So I'll go 0 here, and then it goes max, 0, min, 0. All right. And you'll see the arc sign kind of looks like an S Okay, if you, if you draw that. And I can continue the pattern down here. Just alternating back and forth either side of the line. So that's y equals arc sine or sine negative 1. Now, what range of y equals sine x will result in the inverse y equals arc sine also being a function? All right, and what this question is is like, where can I restrict this? And basically, the answer we're looking for is from there to there. Now, if this is 2 pi, that's pi. Here is pi over 2. And here is negative pi over 2. If I take that and come over here, that gives me this. That passes the vertical line test. So that is a function. So um, the range from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, just like that. That's the range. Okay? Y equals cosine x. Alright, so y equals cosine x now, that pattern was max, zero, min, zero, max, max, zero, min, zero, max, right? And just like before, that pattern repeats infinitely many times, so I can draw it over here on this side, right? That's going to be my cosine curve. Now I'm going to switch the x and y's and follow the pattern up the y-axis. So I start with a max, so that's one here, then zero, then negative one, then zero, and then one. Okay, there we go. And continue the pattern down here. There you are. All right. And that is the arc cosine. All right. And that's the arc cosine right there. Now, what we do is if we talk about that part of it right there, that is like, you know, the first cycle. And that kind of resembles a C more than an S. So the arc cosine makes a C, the arc sine makes an S. All right. Now, the question is. Uh, does that pass the vertical line test, what I've, what I've drawn there, from 0 to 2 pi? And, and the answer is no, right? Because like, there's like a bunch of places where it fails the vertical line test. So what range of cosine x will result in the inverse uh, also being a function? But if you look at from like 0 up to pi, right there, that, right, from 0 to pi, all right, then that would make the inverse a function. So that's the interval that we're looking for that would make that a function. All right, similarly, y equals tan x. All right, remember, zero, asymptote, zero, right, looks like this. All right, and again, I can continue this pattern over here. All right, so what I'm going to do is, and remember, the tangent is always increasing. So the arc tangent is always going to be increasing. It's going to go 0 and then up to the asymptote, just like this. And that is the arc tangent, all right? And that is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, right there, where those asymptotes are. And if I look at what I've drawn here for the arc tan, right now, it is a function, right? If I went further and started to draw another one, you would see Oh, wait a second. That's going to fail the vertical line test, right? So I want to stop right there. I want to stop right there. So what range of y equals tan x will result in the inverse also being a function? Negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay. Just a little bit of time here to fill, just about a minute. Um, talk to you just in general about sine and cosine curves. All right? They go from negative 1 up to 1. That is the range, right? That is the range, okay? So um, the range of, and this should be, yeah, the range. Yeah, I've got these written backwards. This, this should be saying what domain, okay? So I want you to change all those where it says range and change those to domain, okay? Because that's the domain of the regular function. What domain? of y equals sine x will result in the inverse also being, there we go. Because if you restrict the domain, you're going to restrict the range. And restricting the range on the inverse is what kind of allows you to have a function. Okay? All right. There you go. Good luck.